and she would say, this is how she had put this, you know. And, and various times in my life, I had various uh, women friends. I used to call them girlfriends, but I have to be correct here, you know, whatever. whatever. But, but the point is, a lot of different kind of women friends. One of the women friends I had one time was, a, actually she was an heiress to a big fortune. She got, I won't get into all that, but, but what I learned from her is that, you know, those people in that class of people, you know, they, they go to St. Crushes, you know, from the front of the thing, you know, they go to well, kindergartens or whatever, you know, daycare, whatever you want to call it. They go to the same schools, the same prep schools, the same, they take the same holidays in the same places, you know, so they know each other. So you can't really uh, get into that, uh, how you say, get into that world, that realm, you know. So if you want to marry into that, you know, you can't. <laughs> you can't because, you know, everybody knows each other and they talk bad about you if you don't look like them and stuff like that. Now bring that up. They say what's interesting is that most of these folks, they come from uh, like generational wealth. In other words, they don't make it themselves. I mean, it's sure there's a whole crop of people that does that, but there's what they call, I guess they call old money or whatever it is. <clears throat> but see, what happens in that situation, if, say for instance, if your granddaddy or your great granddaddy made the fortune, well, you don't have to do anything. Well, once I think what's happening these days, people sort of get bored. And these people, since they know each other, they, they read and say, they, they plot and they plan. They plot and plan how they can be, you know, the captains of industry in a different way. Or, you know, the robber barons in a different way, in a modern way. And this is what's happening these days. Now, you notice I got a, I got a haircut. There's a phrase that they say, people, you know, you have, you have to take a haircut, meaning that, you know, you got to sacrifice something to whatever. Well, these freak folks, they don't have to sacrifice anything. They got it all. All they have to do is make sure that you have to sacrifice. They, they reap the benefits, you know, sacrifice. Let me give you one. And here's what brought this to mind. I was thinking about this. Uh, we talked about, about the civil rights movement and how uh, we didn't really talk about it, but I think it failed because of, well, not that it, well, it did fail because they wasn't looking at the grand prize, the economic system. Hey, I'm busy talking to Brother Belly. I'll call you back, all right? Later. See, that's what I do. I don't, you know, I, I, back to the point that I was trying to make. Now what happens with these folks is, first of all, they got the, they, they realized the courts were the friends of the civil rights movement. So they infiltrated the courts with a certain ideology. Then what they did is they went and they uh, started buying up the Congress people, you know. Now what they do, now you notice there's this, what they call a revolving door. A revolving door means that you might work for the government and then all of a sudden you go back into the private sector or the corporate sector, then you come back out the corporate sector in a couple of administrations and work for the government again. So therefore you know the laws that are being made. You're making the laws that are being made. So then what happens? Okay, they make the laws that's being made. Then they say, hey, I got the law on my side. So now you start doing all kinds of things to make sure other people who don't have the law in mind, who can't buy off politicians, can't come to your status. Now you really start plotting the planet. Now here's a new deal. Now just follow me on this. This is a quantum leap, if you will. I like to look into the future. It's like, uh, how do you say this? I, I used to uh, get a magazine called Omni Magazine, put up by, by the son of <coughs> the guy that did a uh, penthouse magazine. But it was a magazine about future things. So you, it's not that you can tell the future, I mean, predict the future, but you can tell what's going on, you know? Now the next step to me is that all these people that become a politician going to the corporate world, blah, blah, blah. the next step is that since they've now denuded the government that they have been serving, I'm talking about any, I'm talking about any country on the planet. Now they go into the corporate world as the captains, and they've denuded the government that they come from. Now, now the corporation has more power than the government. And you're the person that was serving in the government. You know where all the, everything is, how to finagle the system. So the future has nothing to do with governments. It has to do with these captains of industry, these corporation people that, that have advisory boards and think tanks out of all these people that used to be in the government. And that's how 
they're fleecing the rest of the planet. So we better wake up. All right, wait, let me put it, we, people know this. I mean, they can sort of sense it, but they feel they can't do anything about it. Well, we better figure out something, how to do something about it. That's my little dispatch today, dispatch for the arts director of marriage. That would be me, T, for the Palace of State Retention Survey, letting you know what I only suspect. Mm. Mm.